How's it going guys? This is Nicholas Murray. I wanted to do a tutorial video for the iRacing career mode that I just made. And so you're going to start out at the forums page if you haven't already figured this out, which you probably know this already. But you go to the AI discussion. You go to career mode, the AI career mode. You could probably search for it if you can't find it. And in the at the very top, at least right now, the latest version is at the top. I will be adding um, future versions as I make updates, um, which will be probably far, pretty far down the road. But you follow that link, and you will come to something like this. Well, once it comes up here, and you will essentially use the, it says use template at the top right you will follow that link and this will this is again through Google Sheets so um, you will need to have a Google account to do this but almost everyone has one of those and then once it it's so now it's using your template and now it's saving this in your thing so you can rename this to whatever you want um, but I'll keep it this as it is for now um, and so as you start out your your um, career, you will need to go to your settings. And it's pretty early on in the um, AI building stuff still. I mean, there's only a handful of cars that are, st that are available and only some tracks. So um, you may want to kind of choose where you are depending on what tracks are available to either you um, through the content you have or through the contents, content that's available with AI. Um, so you can choose from a number of different hometowns. And this is relevant because depending on which hometown you're in will depend on what, th uh, what different series are available. So for example, if you were in Belgium, you wouldn't have um, availability to, say, dirt racing. Um, so well, at least dirt oval racing. So you can choose whatever you want. For example, I let's say you wanted to be in the North Carolina area and you wanted to do some oval racing, uh, some short track racing. And so you can choose, you would choose probably, this would be a good one. Um, this should update soon. Um, and then you'd need to change the if, if depending on the difficulty level that you want, you can choose rookie, intermediate, veteran, veteran or pro, and in that, then you can it changes different settings. So let's say if you're a veteran, you will start out with less money than you would if you're a rookie. Um, it's just the difficulty level. Now this current year, you won't m mess with this until you finish your first season, and then you move it accordingly. Um, and it goes out to 2041, um, and if people have more, use it more than that, well, I don't know. Maybe you should consider not spending so much time doing this. Uh, but anyway, um, or you could just start a new career. Um, anyway, so things will populate as, a, as you go along. So like this last year series, that'll only take into effect when you're in 2021. Um so, uh, you start there, and then you have to go to the classified section. And in that classified section, you can go through all the different cars through uh, that are currently available with iRacing, with some exceptions. Some of the older cars aren't available um, on here because I figured you'd want the updated cars, and it's kind of hard to have a career with a vintage car, so... Um, so what you, you, what you can do is you can actually say, all right, well, I've got an available balance of 17,428. And so I can only do certain, maybe you, you want to select or clear all these and just select certain amounts. Um, and then you can say, all right, well, I only want to see these ones. Um, but this number will change depending on how old your car is. So we're going to keep these all selected. 
And I think one of the greatest places to start would be the AI compatible. So if it's AI compatible, um, you want to see it. So click, make sure it's checked. And you go along and you can see that only the ones that are yes to AI compatible are available. So you're going to see here, okay, well, we've got all these different cars. And you've got some of the oval cars down here as well. Um, now, I have it set up so that you have, well, you don't have to, but it's set up so that you, sh I think you should buy a trailer. Of course, you don't have to, like, it's up to you how you want to use it, but I find that that's probably going to be the most helpful, uh, or I think that that would be a really good good way to approach it. Anyway, um, sorry, I, I ramble a bit. Um, okay, so, so and maybe there's a certain level that you want so there's different levels there's there's national levels local national regional international um, for all intents and purposes uh, national inter and international are pretty much the same um, but you just let's say you just want to be in the local series right now because those are the those tend to be the cheaper and maybe you only want to start in the first tier um, and there's 10 tiers and maybe you're like all right I want to drive an open wheel car Oh, well, no, we already said we would do the uh, pavement ovals. So we'll we'll do those two and see what's available. Okay, well, right now the street stock is available. And um, so this is what a brand new car would cost, which would would be a championship level car, a competitive car. Um, if you want to, you might want to see, well, I don't really have the money for a $20,000 car so maybe all right I got 17,000 I'll let me look to see if there's what a five-year-old car how much that would cost okay that would cost 14,000 so that's taking this number into account so you will need to adjust this number depending on what you want to see so all right so it obviously will change um, now one of the cool things about this is what when you decide which thing you want to buy so you let's say you want to buy a trailer so you'll type in the 67, which is found here, and you go off of it, and it should populate all this information. And you want to say, all right, well, I want it as cheap as we can go, so I'm going to get a 10-year-old trailer for 2000 So then you click this button here, this green button, and it'll run a script. If you don't have a script, it may, might require you to download permissions to run the script, um, like this, for example. Um, and so you'll need to say, all right, continue. And you'll have to sign into your thing. And it might say this, back to safety. You have to click advanced. And then click this. And it should allow it. Uh, this will allow that. So allow. Okay. Great. And now it should run. If it hasn't already, let me check. No, it hasn't run yet. Okay, so we're going to click this script. It's going to run the script, and it's going to show up now in your race shop. And in your race shop, you, you're going to have you're going to see that there's a number of different areas that you can have your vehicle, and um, what its access, what the series it, you it gives you to access to. Um, and then if you wanted to sell it, you could sell it, and that would sell it for you, obviously. But you wouldn't have access to it at that point. Um, again, it's a lot of it is just like you can have it be as real as you want it to be. If you want to cheat, cheat. And if you just want, if you're like, all right, I, I actually made a mistake. I or all right, let's let's buy the the street stock. Okay, so we've got that. I'm gonna buy a eight-year-old street stock and that's ten th that that cost is ten thousand four hundred we're gonna buy this car and there it is it sh so it pops up now let's say you're at really at the beginning of this and you're like all right I don't I actually really want to try a different car before you start a season you can just click on that and delete it and all that and then you'll have to delete these as well but Really, it, it it doesn't make that much of a difference, but I'm going to just undo that. Um, and then 
because I actually do want that. And then this will tell you the, the relative skill level for the AI, to what, to what settings to put it at. So depending on how high of a car age, the higher the car age, the more difficult it'll be because your car's just not as good. So your competition's better. Um, and if as you, as this number lowers, the more high level of a car it is, the AI skill will also lower. So it should simulate your people having better equipment and stuff. So, um, okay, so that's your race shop. Then you can go over to your 2020 tab. And you can choose the series. So this, in this case, it's the street stock. I believe, or maybe it's pavement street stock. I can't even remember. Street stock pavement. And this will populate all what the season is. And it, it keeps track of your racing costs and, and whatnot. And you need to put in your vehicle age. I think mine was eight. So this changes certain things throughout this so that they're important to put in. Um, and so what, what, then you're, what you're ready to do is you're ready to go over to Trading Paints and download those files that you, or not download them, but um, favorite them. So let's, I don't even know, let's see. Um, okay, so you go back to your, the forums, it should be under that first link, and you should find the AI Collections link in the... Thing. There's nothing here. That's not true. Collections. Okay, so you'll have to click collections, and then as you go down, you'll see the different AI career mode ones. Uh, in this case, it'll be the street stock, so you can click here, and then you can favorite this. Um, since mine's already, since it's my uh, thing that I made, I don't need to, but that's where you'd, you'd click right here. So, okay, and then you would open up your iRacing. You'd create the season. And one thing to keep in mind is that as you go along, you, you should choose a car number that isn't already being chosen. Now, okay, how, do, how are you going to find that out? Well, an easier way to do that is to click on the Series tab here. And you can go to the series that you're in, and that was Street Stocks Pavement, okay? And you can click over, and these are all, at the top here is all the numbers that you would probably reasonably want to use. Um, and all the ones with the Y indicate, yes, it's available. All the ones with the no indicate, no, it's not available. Um, and you can go through and say, all right, well, I want to be number 27. That is available because there's a Y there. I mean, you can do this with all the ones that currently have a collection um, available. So that's how you can choose that. Now, let's say you're like, I don't know how, which see, which even series to choose, or which um, which I can't think straight here. Um, which season to choose, or which hometown to use? Well, you can look in your in the local series tab. And you can see here um, that there's all kinds of different ones that you can say, all right, well, I'm in the Gulf Coast. I want to be, I want to look at which tracks are here. This should, and then you'd obviously, you might not want to buy a bunch of new content. So maybe you'll want to find a season that's actually good for you for what you're looking, for what content you have. Um, so that's an option. Then we've got the, and you can look through all the different, things. You just open this little plus tab and it'll open up all the ones that are in that region. Um, and these are the local series schedules and then the regional C series schedules. These ones are only certain ones are available. So depending on the track. So some of them, like again, if you look at the European ones, you're not going to see it. Um, uh, the 410 sprint cars, for example. Um, so, but you can take a look at this and see like, all right, this is where I'd like to be. Um, if you want, if you feel like you need to move your hometown, like you can do that. It's not really meant for it, but 
I guess you can. There's nothing stopping you. Um, if you want to see the skill table, um, if you're a rookie, this is the low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, um, and so on. I mean, this is more just behind the scenes kind of stuff, but some of you might be interested in it if you... So if you are into sim racing, you there's a good chance you're into that kind of stuff. So, um, all right. So after you've run a few races, or after you've run your first race, you put in where you finished. Let's say you finished 15th. Um, you Then now you've earned a certain amount. Let's say you've had four incidents. This is just like your incident count number. Now, something to keep in mind is you can customize this. It's this is this one. This aspect is not a perfect science. Um, like if you've slammed into a wall and you only have a two x, you might want to put a four x or more. Even if you want, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, depends how realistic you want it to be. Um, but if you run off track, you can also either include it or not. I mean, it's up to you. Um, and it, as you go along. Um, you're going to see that you may have a sponsorship offer. And I'm not sure why this is E5. E5. Um, okay. So that should be right. Um, so you might see that you have sponsorships available, which we can get to as well. Um, that When you have a sponsor, there will be sponsorship money that comes up. Let's say you qualified 19th, and in your, in your heat, if you've... If you did that, you finished six or something. Um, depending on sponsorship money, you may make extra mo extra bonus money based on these numbers. Um, but it's you have to basically win your heat to or qualify first to get bonus money. Um, okay, so now that this is clear as mud, I'm sure this is another way you can see what settings you need to be at for your. Um, for the AI relative strength. Um, this cat tells you your average finish for the season, and I think this tells you how many races are in your, this tells you that your tier level, which you're, depending on your tier level will depend on what you're actually, um, how much you're gonna be making in your results, so. All right, now so let's say you've got your, your sponsorship hub here, and you want, all right, so what you can do is you can go to your sponsorship hub, and you can say, all right, I'm going to sign the first available contract. And this is, what this will do is, okay, well, you've now signed a Coca-Cola contract for three races, um, or however many races are left in the season, whichever is less. And then it basically tells you how much base pay is per race and how much your bonus money is depending on where you finish. Um, now, as you go along and your sponsorship comes to an end, you will you might be able to sign another contract. Or you might be able to sign a contract extension. This is up to you if you've got that as an option. You have to s fulfill certain criteria in order to do that. But if you want to sign a contract extension, you can click this button. Um, all right. So then after that, then you can, again, you'll be putting in inf information here. Everywhere, basically where there's a black box around it, that's where you need to fill out. And then th these columns. Um, everything that's blue, you don't want to touch because they're formulas. Um, and this actually links up. Some of these link up to an, a website I, if you're interested. Um, not my website, somebody else's. Um, and then the green is something, oh, this is actually a formula. This should be blue. Maybe in the next version. Um, I'll change that. But the gray doesn't matter. Blue, don't touch unless you know what you're doing. And then green is basically, you're, you're going to see that here, for example. This is change it if you want to, but it know it know that it affects some other formulas or other aspects of the game, um, or of the the hub here. So then let's see. After you've run that, run that, maybe you might be interested in becoming employed with a different team. So once you get to a certain tier level, you can do. Uh, 
there will be an, a number of different teams that offer you to drive for their team. And so you can look here to see if you're a free agent or, or if you're hired. You can't hire, um, be hired for more than just, um, for more than one team for a season. So essentially what you would do is, obviously there's st certain criteria that need to be implemented in order to see if there's any teams that are offering you a ride. But if there are, they would populate here. And you might need to re-click on these. So you'll see that it, if you click no, you're going to see all the sponsorships that are available if it actually goes, but it's not. Oh, yeah, there we go. It just there's They're up here. And this basically will tell you which different teams there are, the series that it'll be racing for, um, their level of competition. So this will say, like, the lowest number is the best, so that'd be like a championship-level team, whereas a 9 would be something that's back back of the pack. This would be the percentage of the sponsorship money that you bring home, so the higher number, the better. Um, and then this is what the AI skill level you would be putting it at. Um, and then this tells you if there's a um, sponsorship offer. And so then what you would do is similar to the classifieds ad, as your sponsorships are available, you'd type the number in this box here, and then everything would populate, and then you would sign the contract for that year. But this only takes into account the higher level championships. So we're talking like tier level seven and above. Um, other than that, you're basically self-employed. Okay, so I'm going to change this back to yes because this, if there's an offer available. Okay, so that's that. And now all this will, will is tracked with financials as well. So this is where you can see the financials tab. This is the number that you care about. This is the how much you actually have remaining. Um, you probably will lose money at first, just so you know, unless you're really good, which is very possible. Um, I'm not very good at, at iRacing, but... I enjoy it, so, all right, um, and then there's the My Race Team um, and the driver database, so let's say you've got an extra car laying around, let's say you upgrade, but you don't didn't want to sell your, your street stock, and you wanted to hire somebody for that, to, to drive that street stock car, what you can do then is you go to the driver database, and you can do the same thing as before, there's all these filters that you can use. And so I'm going to look for the street stocks, and I'm going to clear all of these. And then I'm going to look for the street stocks pavement. And it should be here soon. All right, there. You can click OK. And now all the street stock pavement drivers that are available for hire will show up. And so you'd look at these at their skill level. So the higher, the better, obviously. Um, the sponsorship money per race. Um, what they bring to the table, essentially, and then what they, their expected pay would be, depending on how their skill and their sponsorship money. So the higher sponsorship money would be higher in terms of, of uh, money that they would expect. Now, they've also got some certain, like, expectations like this guy doesn't have many expectations he's like I just will drive anything this level car will be okay I expect it to be a championship level car otherwise I'm not gonna race I'm not gonna drive for your team and so similar to the other things you'd write in all right 389 as your ID number and you now you have to make a you have to actually say what the age of your car is so let in this case it's eight years um, I'm going to get rid of this now that it'll all update. And so certain, all of these drivers, these, these three, the one, five and three year max vehicle age drivers, these ones won't even accept any offer from this team because it's such an old car, but your vehicle age, these, uh, well, no, any of these four. So this one is the only one that will, it'll give you an offer. Let's say that the vehicle age is actually three. That'll make it a little easier for demonstration purposes. And so 
All right, so now we've got a few options. All but Andrew Bailey will accept an offer at least. So let's say you wanted to bring Terry Thorne on. So his ID number is 391. And you need to make him, him make him an offer. His expected pay is $8 a race. Okay, well, let's use a different one for the sake of um, demonstration here. So let's use the 390. Okay. Breton's expected pay per race is $34. So let's say you want to lowball him. There's a chance that he might decline that offer, in which case like this. In this case, he declined this offer. Okay, well, there's, he might accept it, but he, depending on what level of, let's say, all right, well, let me, let me up it now. Okay, he still declined it. All right, let me do 34, what he actually expects. Still, he declined it. Okay, well, let's go 40, $40 a raise. Okay, and then this, he accepted this offer. Um, now there's definitely ways to cheat. Like you could just do like 30, 31, and then you could delete it and you could do 31 again. And eventually you could probably get it to go accepted. But again, how real it real do you want it? That's up to you. Um, all right. And then it, once you sign a contract and you can even sign a contract to them without it being declined. Or with while it's declined. So again, how much you want to, how much realism you want. These are the limitations. It's your choice of how you want to approach it. Okay. So um, you have you can sign the contract. It'll run the script, and he'll show up in the my race team tab now. And so the depending on and then here's where you finish put in your race results and you can watch you, you know you can set it up for put put in their AI skill level into the program and you're good to go you can um, watch the race if you want you can do whatever you want to do with it um, but then you put in the race results here and go on throughout depending on how many races are in the season um, and so that's kind of how this works. Um, I'm sure there's things I'm missing. There's, it's kind of a complicated thing, but um, some things are, are going to be upgraded. Some things will be just janky forever um, because it's just not worth the time to put in. Um, and then this will tell you about your employment history too. So if you were to join Hendrick Motorsports, for example... Um, it'll tell you, it'll keep this stuff updated. It's not, the important ones are, the important tabs for you are all going to be before the years. So these ones. Okay. And then after the years that you want to go, um, you can do that. So at the end of, again, at the end of the season, you'll want to move this to 2021. That's an important step because it really, a lot goes on that. And then you can do the same thing for the 2021 section. So, all right, that's what we've got. And I hope you have enjoyed understanding a little bit better, although I'm sure I did do a great job explaining. And um, if you want to leave some comments, go for it. Again, I'm not going to be updating it super much, but um, I will definitely take things into consideration. Maybe there's things, some glitches that you find. Leave me a comment because... I, there's a good chance I just, you know, it's a simple fix. So, um, all right. Well, I hope you have a great, um, great day and I'll see you in the comments. Have fun.